What's going on guys, Ellie from Copper 9 You might not know who I am, but you've got nothing better to do, so watch the Soccer Cooligans talking all things football, politics, music, culture. Swipe up, click the link, do That'll something. Do. That'll do, that'll do. Ay, papi! Come on, let's go. What is good, everybody? Last Prem Show on Twitch. On Twitch, we're moving over to YouTube Live. We're currently live right now on Twitch, but for not, not much to longer. <laughs> not to confuse everyone by using the word live twice in reference <laughs> to two different things. But uh, guys, uh, we are boop booping our way over to, again, you gotta watch the Twitch. You gotta watch the live show. Right. Uh, but we will, be, we will be jumping over there right after this show. So if you're listening to the podcast, right after this, we jumped on YouTube Live, but it'll be dope. And that's where we're going to be next week. And from now on, Prem Show, we're packing it up. We're putting all the all the all the regulars in a van, mm. and we're driving down to the YouTube live. Okay. And that's what we're going to be from now on. Okay, so make sure YouTube.com/slash Soccer Cooligans, or as I've just as I've just learned, as uh, one of our awesome uh, uh, Twitcheteros uh, is uh, Graphic Mess just said El YouTube, we, right? We have El Twitche. Which still right. works, but now we also have El U2. So <laughs> EL. So if you ever heard my mom <laughs> tell you where she saw a video that there are aliens inside the US Capitol, <laughs> it would be on El U2. <laughs> and that's where we're going to be. So E-L-Y-U-T-U, L U T U dot com if you want to uh, subscribe there as well. I make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. Please, please, please. Uh, we're, we're, that's where uh, we're going to be doing a lot of work. So uh, uh, and, and this live show will be there. Uh, so uh, I've, I've heard a lot of people on YouTube. It's a quite popular platform. So uh, you, we, we, we know you have an account. So feel free uh, to join us there. So thank you, everybody. Hey, you going to? Bay Aragona said, is someone going to play that white girl graduation song at the end? Which and is... which one is that? Is that closing time? That's the only <laughs> one I know. I don't know. What, like, but, what? You know, like bars that don't play hip hop play that song. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, I would love to know what song uh, this is because uh, I'd be happy to <laughs> play it and get and get dinged on Twitch, you know? Yeah. Uh, also, uh, which one we call it? Uh, Almost There 819. Uh, said Cooligan's van is definitely windowless. <laughs> <laughs> you know what we did? We borrowed one of those jitneys. If you're not from New York, you might not know what this. They might be have. They might have in other cities going other places. But if you want to cross the bridge, or if you want to go into Brooklyn or Queens, there's always like these little vans that play te telenovelas mm -hmm. just on on constant. If you're Latino, you pay a dollar. If you're white, you pay two, two fifty, <laughs> however much money. Hey, I'm owed. sorry. Look, white people tax. We didn't. We don't make yeah. the rules. All right. <laughs> Little gentrification, gentrification tax. You know. Whenever I go on it with my wife, I'm like, let me go first. <laughs> if you go, you're gonna pay two dollars. <laughs> <You know? laughs> so, uh, yes, everybody, thank you so much for for tuning. In. If you listen to this podcast, if this is the first time you're listening, hello, my name is Christian Polanco. I'm Alexis Guerrero. All right, we are your favorite stand-up comedians that host the funniest soccer show that has ever lived right here on Twitch and now YouTube uh, Live next week. That's right. And uh, come here. Oh, we're also the gulliest, by the way. Ah, ah. And correct. we're also the most YouTube livest. Correct, you correct. Know me? And me? Uh, come here now, Beach 89. said Bill's defense, big fold. Josh Allen is officially the best quarterback in the league. So you really understand what we mean when we say football. You know what I mean? This is a <laughs> football show. But I will say, I've watched... The NFL playoffs, wild exciting. I've, so I, much, so much excitement. I've watched a couple of these playoff, uh, these playoff games. I was going to say playoff matches because this is how conditioned yeah. I've, I've already been uh, to to the real football, mate. Okay. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. But in fact, every time I watch, I'm like, there's a lot of red cards. Yeah, yeah. But that <laughs> that Bills uh, Chiefs game was pretty ridiculous. I can't, I can't, I cannot believe the Bills lost that game. Just. It, uh, maybe they were just too tired to play defense, and then the the and maybe maybe we can start here because this is very you know related to uh, to football, right? And and the rules of of you know tournaments because people were upset that the Kansas City Chiefs won because they won the coin toss. The Bills didn't get a chance on offense uh, to to get an opportunity to to score. But as we you know, you gotta stop them. You do gotta <laughs> stop them, right? Because the complaint. Before was that you could win on a field goal and that didn't feel right, right? And now 
they changed that rule. You have to win with a touchdown, and then the other team will not get the ball. Or if you score a field goal, the other team has one opportunity to score right. uh, either a field goal or a touchdown uh, to either win the game or tie the game and continue over time. So what? They, they, they made the compromise. They said, all right, the field goal won't do it. But now, now they want, like, like soccer, like football, they want both teams to have an opportunity to, to win the game. When playing an, a game of NFL football, but oh, by the time you're in overtime, I don't even know how you're still alive, right? It's like one from not, you know, not. <laughs> I will say this. This is the one difference between watching, you know, you know, soccer games for three years without any interruption outside of like a couple of Knicks games here, here and there to watching a full weekend of uh, NFL games. By the time you get to the to overtime, you know, in, in soccer, they're like, oh, but they've run so much. You know, by the time they get to the 120th minute, people are like, well, why penalties? Why don't they keep playing? It's like, well, this score hasn't changed. You know what I mean? <laughs> and they're gassed. They've run for 120 minutes. We need to switch it up because you don't have, you can't substitute all 11 players. You can only sub in three, five in some competitions. But by the time you get to the uh, overtime in an NFL game, You've been in 45 car accidents. <laughs> How are you still going? <laughs> so I like this game. Like I would have, I would have let right. you score just so I could go home. It, it, it is the, you know, the, the people that are complaining that the Bills didn't get a chance to get the ball. Like this can't be the argument that you're making to put these guys through more of, of, a, of a, just a nightmare of, a, of an occupation. They, they I got an idea. Instead of overtime, you start at the 20 yard line and you go back five yards the kicker both kickers one on each side uh -huh. you go first the other one goes first first one to miss game's lost bro i you Tell know how, you know how nerve-wracking that'll be genius. i would love <laughs> oh to watch that. bro <laughs> people are saying bro. um fan xy said mls 1998 penalty style uh uh they, they need to uh, yeah uh, board martin said the same thing uh, Manji Sanders said they taped Final Destination series in 45 minutes. I mean, that's what the, an NFL <laughs> game is, essentially. Um, yeah, dude. It's just like, because, again, people complain about penalties, right? And they say, like, this is not the way the game should end. But it's like they've tried everything. This, seem, this seems to be the, the, the consensus. I, I don't know if this will ever change. Will we ever get something besides ending a game in penalties? Because they tried Golden Goal. They tried... Uh, what was this silver goal? Do you remember that? That no, I think wasn't silver goal the one that it um, if you scored <laughs> Palo Minnesota and all caps put kicker war. <laughs> I think it's I think it would be the best. <laughs> I was thinking about that. I'm like, could you imagine the pressure on this one person just as the whole team who've battled it out left and right? You don't even get hit. And now the whole thing is up to you. There, so it would be the greatest. What were the? There was okay. So there was there was like I remember golden gold. golden gold. There Obviously, was Obviously what we have now, which is you've get two 15 minute halves. Make of it what you will. What's so what, um, the civil? I'm gonna look this up. Silver. Okay, so this was the. Um, Mandy Sanders said silver gold was a ridiculous rule, like the golden gold. But I don't see what it. I don't remember. Th this, this was. I think you can if you scored in the first half of extra time, the game would be over. It wouldn't go to the second half of extra time. I think that's what it was. Uh, yeah. That sounds so dumb. Yeah, yeah. Th th this here. So silver goal was effectively designed to limit extra time to 15 minutes. If a deciding goal was scored in the first period or if a team was ahead at the break, then the game would end at halftime in extra time. That used to be, they tried that for a while. And that people were not happy with that. They, golden goal didn't seem fair either because, and not, not that it didn't seem fair, but it, it leads to the least attractive brand of football because the, both teams are just trying to not get scored on so they they don't really have much incentive to try to score the goal um so even though it would have felt like a you know a buzzer beater or whatever it, it never led to that so penalty i got an idea i got an idea what let's fix this whole thing okay i got it it's just one 20 minute half of extra time right there's no 15 and 15 it's just one 20 minute no goalkeepers. Okay. <laughs> sure. It's just like, yeah, when you play in the park and you put, you know, yeah. the backpack in between the, for, for the two <laughs> backpacks to make the goal. Yeah. <laughs> you know, your center back has to jump ahead the ball out of the way at the line. No hands. Think of the excitement. Yeah. No oh. hands. 
<laughs> no hands, no goalkeepers, nothing. Goalkeepers go sit down. All right. <laughs> come, come here now, Beach 89 said Alexis is genius. <laughs> <laughs> Bay Raguna said they should ha just have the managers duel after OT. Yeah. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> Literally, wait, who would wear the white glove the and slap the other one, you know? <laughs> Roy Hodgson, <laughs> the poor bastard. Uh, <laughs> I think Roy Hodgson has been in a couple duels in his life as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I think he was here when the Constitution was signed. <laughs> um, Chanchada Millonaria said, Alexis on some wenger. Uh, so dude, you know, yo, Arsene Wenger got some great ideas. I like this whole World Cup every two years. Uh, I might be the only person who likes it. Bring pro, re uh, pro rel to NFL with the Canadian Football League. <laughs> dude, I'd be down for it. So Major Sanders said, Hodgson versus Rainieri. How about this? If you get sacked in the middle of the season, you get to duel the other man that so they bring in <laughs> to keep your job. Right, right, right. You know, but, but teams like Watford and Everton, well, you haven't you have to schedule like six duels a season, bro. Like this kind of <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, I, I, it seems like uh, you know to to conclude this because we weren't planning on starting here, but it feels like that penalties is probably what it's going to be for. Our lifetimes. I don't see it changing in our lifetimes as far as ending a, a, a game of tournament-style football. Buddy, if Coca-Cola calls FIFA and says, <laughs> I got an idea, it's changing. It's changing right away. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. If they want to do a, a chug of fizzy drink on that, yeah. they do it. FIFA will be like, this is the rule. They got to do the thing where they, you know, players spin around like a bat and then go to take <laughs> a penalty. You know what I mean? Make it a little bit more, more uh, pizzazz, you know, to it. Right. Okay. Funny how there's always a baseball bat when nobody <laughs> plays that sport outside the U.S. But anyway, <laughs> Pepsi versus Coke and a chug off. I'm down for it. <laughs> I still think my NFL kicker idea is pure genius. The, the stress, the pressure, the fans. You, I, I mean, I how many how many kicks can you kick before you're the, insanely tired? You know, yeah, your legs got to be tired after four, <laughs> and you only get the break of the other kicker kicking me. Yeah, yeah, bro, a lot of commercial breaks. <laughs> NFL, you listening? <laughs> All right, uh, we get credit. Okay. Um, so the, uh, all right, so let's, w w let's start with what the, the title is, uh, for, uh, today's show. Dusan, uh, is it Vlahovic or Vlahovic? You know what? It's, I don't give a damn. That's what it <laughs> it's, is. uh, it's pronounced, it's you're, a, you're dead to me. Okay. <laughs> it's. I never wanted you to begin with. <laughs> I believe that's how you pronounce it. Fio uh, uh, Fiorentina's uh, striker, who's been absolutely uh, crushing it. Uh, how many goals does he have already this season? He's been, he's been 21, if I'm not mistaken. Pretty impressive. Uh, even though we all know Serie A is this farmer's league that should not be respected. We all know this. Exactly. Uh <laughs> yeah, now that, now that I think of it, it would have just been a terrible signing. Glad <laughs> Arsenal dodged a bullet. Manchester who said, it's Nahovich. <laughs> nah. He has okay, so he has 17 goals um, this season so far. Uh, hey, you sure for all competitions? Not all competitions. I, I think I'm okay, looking at that. That might be where I'm getting the 21 number now. Serie A. Um, <laughs> Almost there. 819 said, Vaha, not going to be a gooner. <laughs> <laughs> really, really wedged this. So in there. a couple days ago, I, I had seen that this was pretty much like a lock. Uh, like uh, at least well, he did that, that whole like weird. Yeah, I'm not. I'm waving goodbye to the fans, but I'm also not waving goodbye to the fan thing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And yeah. then everyone was like, Arsenal fans were watching it in slow mo, like this a Pruder film, you know? Right. <laughs> like this is clearly a sign he's coming to Arsenal. He's changed his mind because he changed agents or whatever. And apparently that wasn't the case. Right. He's been. I don't know. And this is why the title is what it is. People are saying that Juventus finessed us by keeping us on, like keeping us on the hook for the Mello deal. To keep our focus off of Lahovic. So, uh, yeah, so Arthur Mello is going to Arsenal, correct? It's not confirmed yet, but it looks like it's almost a done deal. Right. But in the meantime, uh, you know, there's apparently there's been something like 65 suspicious trans, uh, transactions with Syria, right? That uh, that someone, I forget, it might be the Italian, the Italian um, you know, officials are uh, investigating. 40 something of them have been Juventus. There's all these talks about Juventus having no money. The Juventus didn't have money, uh, you know, coming in, but all of a sudden they found 80 million euros to sign this guy. And I'm not, I'm not, you know, first of all, if you're doing something a little sketchy, it shouts to you. You know what I mean? You figured out, you figured out a way to cut. I mean, but we are talking about the club that 
purchased the officials. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, they were heavily penalized for that. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. There's a whole name, Calcio Boli. You can look it up. Um, which one call it? To 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 uh, to. To suggest that something, uh, you know, is is a little bit weird about all of this, uh, you know, whatever, you know, I don't want to throw that kind of shade. Look, the player didn't want to come to Arsenal. He made that clear. At the end of the day, he made that very clear. He said he wanted to go play for Juventus. If that's the case, I'm actually not mad at him. Go do your thing. But you're dead to me. I, and he said he wanted to play Champions League football. <laughs> I hope Juventus <laughs> slips out of the top six. I hope you never play. Thank you very much, Nick Lays. I hope Juventus never plays. In Champions League, why you there? <laughs> uh, Board Martin said you meant this boop boop. Uh, I hope I hope you don't have a boop boop, and <laughs> and I hope you have to take a lot of time off. You feel me? The uh, look the the one thing it it, it, it did feel like uh, as far as what I, the reports I saw was that uh, Fiorentina did agree with Arsenal on the the transfer. I mean, as far as the, the bid that they that that Arsenal made. Yeah, but he wouldn't. Answer Fiorentina's phone call. Right. So that seemed to be the issue. And, and the, you know, and this is probably, this is the good thing about, you know, uh, uh, European, uh, uh, you know, player transfers and dealings and stuff like that, where the player does have a lot of say uh, in where they want to play. If they really do not want to go somewhere, the club, their their parent club cannot make them uh, do that. And they, have, they really have a lot of uh, influence. But Fiorentina seemed like a, a little bit like, they were they were happy to sort of let him go or get not necessarily get rid yeah, of him. Fiorentina is having I don't know. Did you see the Rocco Camiso article at the I, Athletic? I did, yeah, yeah. We talked about this. Like they're they're cash hungry right now. They need cash. So if you got a player that all of a sudden is commanding eighty ninety million, yeah. you got to sell him. You yeah. know what I mean? So do you feel like the? I mean, look, he, he would have been a great fit. At Arsenal, let's not be crazy. I mean, he's a he's a. Oh no, he would have been the perfect striker, I think, for what we need. He has like that bit of a Giroud kind of a, a presence, mm -hmm. bit of a center, a bit of a center forward, but also he finds the back of the net. And board uh, Bay Area Guna said we need uh, Dominic Calvert Lewin or Isak. Look, Isak hasn't really shown up this year like he did last year, but he does kind of fit the mold. And he used to play with Odegaard. He played with Odegaard uh, Real Sociedad. So yeah. there's that bit of a connection there. He hasn't had the service, I think. The assist leader for uh, the assist leader for Real Sociedad this year has two assists, mm. something like that. Yeah, I mean they ain't really hitting like they did oh, before. Scoring all penalties? How are they score? <laughs> no, <laughs> boy, he has he hasn't scored a penalty yet. Or last year he didn't score a penalty. This year he scored one penalty out of the four goals he has. So, um, you know, he's one of those dudes that can kind of find his own his own uh, his own goal, but he hasn't really done it to a great effect this season. Um, but I think linking him back up with uh, Martin Odegaard would be amazing. Um, look, Dominic Calvert-Lewin, I'm not completely sold on, but he is kind of that center forward kind of thing that you might have gotten with Vlahovic. So, um, look, whoever it is, bring someone in that bags goals. I don't care who it is. Right. Bag, bring someone in. Like They were talking about Diego Costa. Right, Coming right. in for a six month loan. It's getting yeah. Arsenal, bringing that seventy five year old man. Arsenal are down bad when Diego Costa's name is uh, getting thrown in there. It's <laughs> from the Brazilian <laughs> league. Uh, but he won. South Dakota. He, I believe that Darwin Nunez, who is Nunez, is great. Uh, Uruguayan. Um, I, who is he with? Valencia. He's with someone in La Liga. Um, I forget who he's with, but he's pretty good. Uh, no, he's with Benfica. Benfica. Um, look, he hasn't scored a ton of goals, but he's still super young. What's this so, photo? Look uh, at this photo that I, that that Bing uh, found. This hey, is, this is, look at that. <laughs> this looks like he's also an extra on Cobra Kai. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Dude is looking wild, melodramatic right here. Uh, how many Riyad Mahrez is he? <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, um, so yeah, look, Darwin, Darwin Gabriel Nunez Rivero. I mean. Ribeiro. My Latinos will just add names with it's not even needed. You know what I mean? <laughs> so the um, look, uh, Arsenal, they have to figure uh, something out because they don't want to see, you know, uh, was it the game against Burnley, right? Lacazette missed that great, great opportunity that would have given them three, uh, three crucial uh, points that they desperately would have needed. But the, uh, you know, it, it, it feels like the sorting out this striker situation is uh, it should be hopefully sorted out in January. Cause I don't know again, what the issue is going to be in, um, in, in the summer, because now the, uh, 
the other conversation, a couple other names, like Tyler Adams' his name came up again um, as, as a possible summer uh, transfer. But, but it seems like... They need a central midfielder. I mean, as bad as they need a striker, they need a central midfielder because they sent everyone on loan. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, they had Ainsley Maitland Niles who has already said he didn't want to stick around and, and wait to be used as a sub. He wanted to go get first team minutes. Um, so I get it, you know, that he was going to leave. But, you know, and I get this. Like, in my Arsenal group chat, everyone keeps saying, but why would you let him go on loan if you didn't have a backup plan? And if Melo is your backup plan, well, you've got, what, five days to get it done? So get it done. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, we're going to absolutely need it. Uh, Bayer Aguna said, I still think Jovic uh, could be a good six-month loan. And depending on form, possible purchase like the Odegaard deal. Look, I mean, Jovic doesn't score goals either, so I'm I'm kind of a little worried about bringing in someone like that. Uh, but at the end of the day, we need a body in there. It's it's looking like uh, Obama Yang's not going to get unless he's apologized and has shown some type of remorse for how he acted and is willing to change. I don't think he's going to get a run towards the end of the season. Lacazette has proved he can't do it on his own. As much as he, I think he's a a, a spark plug and. And it brings a lot of energy. If he's not scoring goals, if he's not getting those chances, um, if he's not, you know, and he had a chance, like Christian said, he had a chance. And if he would have scored that, and look, people were saying like, oh, it's a weird angle. Dude, completely open goal. You're 30-something years old. You're the captain and the top striker on the team. That's the goal you got to you gotta get, yeah. especially at home. It wasn't a tough so, one. The um, defender was there. It, was, it wasn't It was easy, but it could have done better. Also, he's the one that made that run. Yeah, he made yeah. that run. Yeah, You know, he could have chose the other side of the defender. He made that run, knowing that probably he was a bit more open there. So uh, Laka would be a great super sub. Laka is a great super sub, and I don't think he's going to be here next year. But, but, you know, of all the people that we've heard connected to Arsenal, Matt Turner, out of nowhere. Bruh. Out of nowhere, friend of the show, friend of us, friend of friend of friend of us, friend of ours, <laughs> friend of us. He's a friend of us. <laughs> Shouts to us. Yes. Okay. Um, yeah. <laughs> the yes, Matt Turner's name. Uh, apparently, uh, Arsenal made an offer for Matt Turner, and uh, and look. I, so I'll just say this because I can't can't reveal too much, but it's a genuine offer. It is. It is a hundred percent real. Uh, we've, we've, our sources are, t- <laughs> can, yeah, I was going to say, can you, can you just go back a second? We can't reveal too much. <laughs> we can't reveal too much, but we do know what the hell are you talking about? <laughs> this is, this is a, a hundred percent genuine offer. Um, and that it I, essentially that it, it is in, uh, the reports are saying that, um, the arsenal and the, and the player terms have been agreed. This is all on the new England revolutions. Uh, court. They they're the ones that uh, I believe the offer was five million uh, for, for 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 Matt Turner. Will will they let him go? Will they sell him to you know the, the who's the backup? It, it, it's not is it Knighton or oh, Cody Cropper? Who's the backup at, at the Revs right now? I believe it's Cody Cropper. So yeah, um, yeah. So that that's their only goalkeeper, and obviously to to have the goalkeeper of the year leave the club is probably you know it, it, it's a tough. Definitely the best goalkeeper in the league, and I yeah. you could say Andre Blake, but I think Matt Turner turned a lot ahead. <laughs> Chancha United said, "quote unquote" sources Christian going all Hollywood on us. SMH. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Manchester well, Andrew, Andrew, Andrew wanna, said, "I do." Chris Rizzio Polmano exclusive. <laughs> 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 Look, we know some people. That's all I'm saying. We know some I, people. Aki Ramos. I will say this: people may not know this, but Christian uh, two years ago had to move to New Jersey. Yeah, because there was an issue with his old apartment. He had to find a new one real quick. So he picked some random town no one's ever heard of. That town also happens to be <laughs> where Matt Turner grew up. Hundred percent, yeah. So I don't know if I don't know if Christian is chasing people down at the, at the Whole Foods. I don't know what he's doing. This is, yeah. I don't know if he's going door to door. I could, <laughs> saying, yeah. Are you the Turners? I live where uh, where Matt Turner is from, which coincidentally. Uh, but yeah, uh-huh. so th- this is a, uh, a, a you know in the next couple of days we will we will find out what the 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 what the decision uh, you know. Pretty much of the revs is going to be, but the the interesting thing here is, man, you got to imagine they sell him just because of the opportunity it is for him, right? I mean, it would right? it would be obviously a huge opportunity for for the player. But the 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 main thing people have discussed here, they've essentially said if Matt Turner does 
go to Arsenal, he will 100% be the backup. And Ramsdale is the number one. We all know that. Um, do we, do, you know, U.S. men's national team fans are basically saying, do we want our top two goalkeepers to be on the bench? Zach Steffen so that's, for that's Man a City. Huge, that's a huge question. But I will say, you could do worse with, with having two goalkeepers at that level. And frankly, if you are Matt Turner, look, if if uh, Burn Leno was the was the number one goalkeeper in Arsenal right now, I think Matt Turner has a chance to be number one. Right. That's how good I think Matt Turner is. Because it's Aaron Ramsdale, because of the way he started the season, because of how well he's been playing, he's made a, he made a couple of mistakes. He hasn't played incredibly well the last few matches, but he's clearly like a darling of the team. You know, the, the fans love him. He's a bit of a, a bit of a leader. A little different than Matt Turner in that way. Matt Turner seems like a bit more of a quiet guy. Not that outspoken, wouldn't turn around and get involved in the chance. So he doesn't really have, like, you know, he wouldn't have the vibe that um, that Aaron Ramsdale has. So Aaron has all the opportunity to be the number one, probably not in contention. But I could see it getting a little, if if, you know, if he slips up a little bit or doesn't play well, I could see Matt Turner coming in and really shining. That said, maybe Matt can come in and ask for, you know, uh, a loan next season. You know what I mean? Why, he needs maybe money? He'll play top minutes what? somewhere else. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Damn, can bat. I get a low interest, <laughs> low interest loan? Is that possible? What are you guys, you guys, SBU? <laughs> so, uh, so it, it, it's, if, if that does happen, you know. <laughs> Hannah Banana said, by the way, Cooligans hang out with Pablo Maurer, and now they have connections. <laughs> Coincidence. Okay. Uh, so, the, but the, the, the and I do want to correct you also, by the way. Uh, who said it here? Uh, Someone said, I heard it was five. Oh, uh, South Dakota got five million pounds. You said five million dollars. It is closer to like seven, seven to nine million dollars. Oh, okay, okay, US. okay. So, I mean, yeah, yeah. fair amount, uh, fair amount of cash there or, or quit. Thanks for hitting the bu follow button, Chan Fowler. Um, so the, but, but this issue about um, him, if, if he is a backup and so is Zach Steffen, how do you think this affects the U.S. men's national team? I know we have, we have a couple uh, of World Cup qualifiers coming up. It's a World Cup year. Do you want both goal, both of your, your starting goalkeepers or your one and two to be, uh, to be on the bench at their clubs? Well, I mean, you know, Evan Horvath, <laughs> now's, now's your shot. Ethan. You know what Ethan, I mean? We have Evan, other options. But okay. Ethan, my bad. <laughs> Ethan. Uh, now, you know, we have other options. So Wait, he, I'm not. He is also, I believe, not the starting goalkeeper. He, he is. Wait, a, is he not? He is at um, Nottingham Forest. I believe he's at Nottingham Forest. And I don't think he is the starting goalkeeper either there. So really right now. He does play for Nottingham Forest. Really right now, um, it might be. <laughs> Nick Lacia, Evan Horvath is the worst brother. That's what he said. Um, <laughs> Bay Raguna says Zach Steffen still looks sharp despite being a backup. I would I would agree with that. And he, you know, he obviously is playing in like league, like cup matches and 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 things like that, league league cup matches. Um, but the uh, in a maybe it's the World Cup year part that feels a little bit sketchier or scarier but i would say like the three goalkeepers that are called in right now even though zach stefan uh, i believe has like a back injury that he's dealing with and he he's kind of iffy yeah he didn't make the trip right so he's not in columbus right now but it, right now it's zach stefan matt turner and sean johnson bro i would be good with sean johnson for these world cup qualifiers if if oh you Same. know if, if if there's two backups and then one keeper in mls that is getting minutes I don't know, bro. I I I, I they I, I just won an MLS Cup. I, I'm down. Yeah, I I would feel pretty good about that at the moment. So you, let if you let me know, listener, viewer here on Twitch, if you agree or disagree, because I I still think he he would still be in in, in very good form and probably in a little a little bit better form than two guys that are not starting. So, um, okay, uh, one thing. Okay, I wanted to get to this because this is uh. A nice, just a, a a nice break from the seriousness that we we nor normally have uh, on this show. The hell are you gonna pull up? <laughs> this is uh, there's a club I believe in. Uh, oh my goodness, what, I don't even know what country. W Willem Willem two Willem the second. It is in what? Oh, Norway, N N Netherlands. I don't know, but. 
I want to get, I normally don't get a name on the back of my kid. I want to get first and last name. In Holland. Me? In Holland. Uh, in Holland. <laughs> so, um, so we got to, we got to, we've heard, we've heard this name before, but his name is Jizz Hornkamp. He, uh, one more time, J by the way, uh, Board Martin <laughs> allowed. I can't believe we have to allow this term here. The man's name. J Jizz Boop Boop, okay? <laughs> Jizz Horncamp. <laughs> Jizz Boop Boop. <laughs> that is his name, Jizz Horncamp. And look, I would have, if you would have said to me when I was in seventh grade, if you would have just walked in a room and said, Jizz Boop Boop, <laughs> I would have laughed until the next day. I would have just perpetually laughed for an entire 24 hours. So he, I believe he got a, um, a hat trick earlier this year or something like that, or maybe last year. Uh, Buddy. That, so that's why his name uh, was, was, was heard all over the internet. Um, because right. <laughs> this isn't the first time we hear of this, of this man. Right. He, yeah, obviously, he speaks Dutch. If, if we're hearing him right now, you might be hearing that. Uh, so, but, but the, I mean, the tweets, we, we, we have to just go in, in the, in the comments because the, the comments were, were great. I mean, some of the people, we, Josario Marchosa, I hear Jizz is great on the ball and loves to score. It's a good one. Okay. <laughs> That's a pretty good one. That's a pretty good one. Okay. Uh, there, there, so there was one that was deleted and I, I got a, you know, I, I, I wish I would have screen capped it, but I didn't. From uh, Matteo Bonetti from um, CBS Sports. <laughs> Crimson Pizza, but three times in 90 minutes, the stamina. <laughs> it's a lot of jizz. <laughs> it's almost it's a lot too, of jizz on the it's score sheet. It's almost too much jizz. Um, the, <laughs> but Matteo Bonetti, and I, I, I'll just have to. Uh, I mean, the last one was probably weak. You know, <laughs> the third, the third time. Sure. You know? But he said, um, uh, Man, I can't even. He basically said, um, uh, Jizz Hornkamp is going to, uh, you know, uh, score a lot this season or finish a lot this season. He has 25 goals so far. He's going to, he's going to ruin a lot of clean sheets. <laughs> Loved it. And for some reason, he deleted it. That was such a good joke. And I'm like, oh, he must, he works at CBS. It's probably a little too racy. Uh, Somebody was like, get it off there or <laughs> it's too good. Save it for our content. <laughs> you know, and the Chanchala United just said third one barely sputtered across the line. Oh, you hate to see it. <laughs> you got you to give it your all. OK, you, really, you got to push harder. Right here. Macho the meme. Macho the meme just put come. <laughs> <Right here. laughs> no, no subtlety. Just straight up. <laughs> Uh, this is this is from the SNL sketch, remember? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the Lonely Island guy. <laughs> but this is great. Uh, a fun look at Dembele, just <laughs> in shock. Uh, <laughs> uh, oh, yeah, DBT1178 just said, I, uh, the screen cap tweet said, Jizz Hornkamp has been scoring loads in the last two seasons, 25 goals total. Safe to say, a few clean sheets will be ruined. Great. God bless. Great tweet. Apolo I'm sorry you don't you don't work for a company that uh, that that has a sense of humor. Okay, that's all I right? can say. I'm sorry that I'm sorry the word freedom comes <laughs> to mind. You know. <laughs> okay, the way they're they're, se okay. they're censoring the childishness. You hate to see it. Okay. So you so you think it, in CBS they couldn't just randomly pull up the uh <laughs> you know the 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 stress that that you know. <laughs> Vinegar uh, strokes. I'm allowing this. By the way, <laughs> the word "ball" is is the one they had a problem with. I want you to know that. He said, "If Jizz is double teamed or triple teamed when he has the ball, does that mean he's in a <laughs> sticky situation? That means they're all in a sticky situation. Because this... the one thing I know about Jizz, he's gonna find a way to get to the goal. <laughs> you know? Okay. Uh, so this is uh, look. I, I'm 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 interested in. Like the fact that obviously this guy has to, had to deal with this his entire life. I mean, even though no, I don't think so. I he's where where's he? He's Dutch. I think so. Yeah. So obviously, they probably don't have. They don't. If have, you told me they don't if, have if jizz my last name was in in <laughs> in uh, <laughs> they, in they Holland. Don't jizz. <laughs> no, but uh, what should we call it? Like it, it wouldn't have been his nickname if it was a you know a a uh, term for that there. 
Right. He hasn't had to deal with any of this. I, and you would think that maybe this is like a nickname. Hey, it's my homie. It's my homie Jizz. That's my man yeah. Jizz. <laughs> Yo, we oh, y'all, y'all know about Jizz? <laughs> Damn, son, how old are you? <laughs> uh, but no, Thank you almost there eight one nine. This is his government, bro. It is straight up Jizz. His, family, his mother. You know what happened? The doctor said to his father, "It's a boy," and he held him and he said. I will name him Jim, <laughs> which is Dimitri. I mean, it's what he is. You know what I mean? It's what he came from. He looks so. He looks like a jizz to me. You know? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I just at first I was thinking Brian, but as soon as I made eye contact, the person that popped in my mind was Jizz, and it was loud. <laughs> but no, he is. Uh, yeah, he is from uh, the 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 rip. North Holland, okay, <laughs> where the rip, you know how it is. Uh, the the uh, they call it the the RIP. You know how we do out here. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> RIP to them clean sheets is what it is. Um, the, I mean, we have to look at Twitch is like banning all these words. It's like no, this is yeah. we oh have my. to allow all of this. Almost there, eight one nine. Uh, where did I? I just missed it. Where is it? Uh, Hold on, I allowed them all. Where'd it go? I don't know. Oh. Wait until Jizz Jr. comes on the scene. <laughs> <laughs> Surprise the soccer player, not a swimmer. I mean, <laughs> strong swimmer, I'm sure. So the um, so incredible. Uh, great, great fun. Uh, but good on the team as well because they knew they had to address it immediately, right? It, there was no way you're going to sign a Jizz Horn Camp and – you know, just let it. Let, you ain't get away with that. Just letting it sit there. You're not gonna. Yeah, you can't sweep it under no. the rug. All right, you're gonna. <laughs> no. You gotta. You, you gotta point it out. You gotta sort out uh, the jizz immediately. Okay, otherwise it's gonna become a problem. All right. Uh, <laughs> Bay Raguna said, "Has anyone seen his brother Nutsack? No, no, it's, pro- it's pronounced nut- Nutsack uh, Horn Camp. Yeah. Okay, you should have put an e at the end of it, or maybe an accent. <laughs> um, okay, so all right, where 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 to next after after Jizz Horn Camp? What's uh, what a lot a- of fun? Yeah, that was fun. I'm glad you brought that up. Mm-hmm. Um, let's talk a little bit about Everton's manager situation." Because there's been a couple movement. Claudio Ranieri got sacked, and you know what? You know what? Uh, 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 Wolves did immediately, or Watford did immediately. I do know they hired somebody. They hired, <laughs> they hired somebody. Probably not the guy you wanted. I don't know if I'm allowing all of these, but they seem to be going away. Uh, Jen and I said, I mean, if you sign Jizz, you're going to put it in everyone's faces. <laughs> Wonderful. Uh, <laughs> you have to use the carpet cleaner. I mean, <laughs> that's just good advice. Uh, Barry, Barry Gunner said, get Jizzy with it. <laughs> I mean, <that's, laughs> well, we know, okay. you know, you can know the goal, the goal music when he scores, you know, you, you got it set. Okay. Um, uh, Robert from LA said, uh, the equipment manager couldn't believe he has. He has to put jizz on the number nine shirt. I mean, um, I, I imagine when uh, Willem makes it to uh, Champions League and jizz has to has to take on Messi. You know what I mean? It's going to be uh, <laughs> Messi jizz. The Messi versus jizz ba- battle is going to be incredible. <laughs> buddy, Messi jizz, probably for the first goal. Because by the last one, it's not that messy. Uh, <laughs> okay. But um, damn, I missed the final Twitch show and I still don't have enough points for an air horn. Damn, come on, David from Tampa. Um <laughs> Do Jizzy Jeff. I mean, at this point, we're just Oh, I'm assuming DJ DJ Jizzy (laughs) Jeff. Okay. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, Okay. Which one we'll call it. Let's talk about, um, okay, Watford. Fires. Claudia Ranieri after three months. Poorly drawn Arsenal said, what have I walked into? Look, I don't... And then immediately an air horn sound. We're just talking about my man Jizz Horn Camp, okay? Yeah. Uh, We're just talking about Jizz, baby. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) I've, I've had... Uh, uh, jizz on my wall for years. Okay, I am a huge fan. <laughs> since I was, since I was young, you know. Uh, anyway, I put it up. I put it up there when no one was on. Uh, <laughs> People are bing bonging and air horn like crazy. Okay, it's. Uh, oh my god. So so listen, Rainieri sacked after three months. Immediately in the time it's taken, Everton. To find a new manager, <laughs> Watford have replaced two managers, essentially. <laughs> Rainieri comes in three months. You ain't doing well. Boom, you out. Here comes Roy Hodgson, right? <laughs> what the hell is going on at Everton? Uh, horns, horns for the horn camp. <laughs> <laughs> Fan XY said, oh, you got jizz on your kit? 
<laughs> hey, this is never gonna end this is gonna be that's it we've opened the uh, pandora's box okay um, Dude, you know it's funny i never get a name on my kid but I, I i think i'm gonna put some jizz on my on my kid for sure. <laughs> okay good you know at least i'm it, definitely gonna get jizz on my kid, at least it, look it, it's a sign of commitment to be honest okay yeah <laughs> <laughs> um all right before we talk about everton's managerial situation because we, we talked about this last week um let let's just talk about the 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 loss to Aston Villa because this is why also it is it, it, it's a, it's a it's in a bad situation right now uh for uh for Everton. Everton they now they are having um I'm looking at this photo now. I don't know if I can show it here. <laughs> David from Davis said I'm really glad my mom doesn't speak English because I'm at the dinner table with her right now. <laughs> And we're just out here, just, 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 just. <laughs> no, poor woman. Just Better just get eso, get, uh-huh. get just, get yeah. eso. Anyway, <laughs> anyway, the the loss to Aston Villa, they lost one nil. Uh, uh, a, a lot of issues, right? Because not only a, a corner kick, uh, assist by Shasta Crimson Pizza, assist by uh, 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 Lucas Digne, um, the the goal from uh, uh, it was Emmy Buendia. Uh, off a off a corner, then fans start throwing bottles. Uh, start throwing Lucasade at at at, at the at the player. I think they hit. What, did they hit Buendia? I don't know who they hit, but they hit Digne and they hit somebody. Somebody, else. yeah. So obviously, you know, everybody's derided them. This is absolutely ridiculous. They got the the person was pointed out and got arrested. They obviously will be uh, uh, will be banned. Um, this it, it, this is you know a a. a an ongoing thing we saw it i believe recently i think it was against hall everton's um carabao cup match against hall they fans threw st- stuff at them at, at at everton players so this is obviously it's terrible and 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 no one sh- and no one should do it and uh the the, the on the american there's bro- just no way back from throwing something at a player like i i honestly think they should be banned for life from all sporting events you know, if you throw something at somebody at a at a at a at a football game, you shouldn't be allowed to go to a hockey match after that. You know what I mean? Right, right. You should be banned from all sports. You clearly can't handle being in in a in, in a sporting event in a public place. Right, and the um, so it's it's obviously uh just uh, uh, you know clearly a, a ridiculous thing to do, and no nobody's uh supports that kind of behavior the the one interesting thing uh the american broadcast on on nbc john champion was on the call and did say um you know terrible that the fans are th- i'm paraphrasing but he's like it's awful and you don't want to see fans throwing stuff but he said you have to put some responsibility on the players for celebrating in that end uh and <laughs> how do you feel about that christian let's hear your first man just andrew just that. just put, put social distancing <laughs> <laughs> so we had a, i don't even know how it relates <laughs> but i love it <laughs> but um the so <laughs> fan xy said imagine being the guy to trade kids with jizz at the <laughs> so um look the so I, I this is what i would say if you're on TV and you're calling a game, you you got to do the politically correct thing and obviously simply say fans should not throw things at players. We know that. We 100% know that. That's not a surprise. Um, right. Behind closed doors, when you're talking to the homies, you're talking to a fellow player, you're talking to whatever, we all know, we all Funny. know, yo, you don't go in front of the ultras and go and start celebrating because something might happen. We all know that, right? But you don't. You can't say. You don't say that on the broadcast. You don't say that on the broadcast because there's some things. Whether there's some things you know, you're gonna you're gonna piss a lot of people off, and and it's and it shouldn't be this way. That he can't say that. That he can't because lo- logically we know you don't you don't go to the Gladys Street and 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 celebrate in front of those fans and, and because they can see but it as antagonistic. Also, it's also like what victim shaming though. Like he didn't go over there. Wait, hold on. Okay, thank you for allowing that. Uh, <laughs> thank you, uh, Anna Banana, for the the Jizz's goldfish <laughs> emote. Um. Yeah, graphic mess says do dumb shit, expect to get hit. Like I get. All of those things. 
it's not smart to go over there. But I think the the expectation is, boo, you could call him and his family whatever you want outside of racist terms. You could, you could, you know, uh, give them the, uh, the English people do two fingers. You could do all of that. But you can't throw something at him. Right. You know what I mean? Well, yeah. That's the part where we're done. Like, that draws the line. So, yeah, I agree. It's probably not smart to go to the most aggressive group of people that want the other team to win and rub in their face that you just scored against them. And then... And Go. You make should it. throw it. You should. You obviously. Yeah. yeah. So, you shouldn't. So that ends at that point. You know what I yeah. mean? Yeah. So we we we're all on the side of don't throw anything. We all know that. But we're also, yeah. you know, rational human beings and say, yo, if you if you if you hop in that alligator pit, an alligator might bite you. You know what I mean? We know that. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, but and that is the. Uh, uh, you know, it, it's it's unfortunate that that you know, but you you can't say that, and you you can't say it on a broadcast. You might you can say it behind closed doors, you, whatever. But the the story here is that the fact the, the fact that Everton fans would throw something at, at, at Lucas Digne, uh, and I I, I want to make sure I read this because so well, the guy doesn't get a chance to play, and then all of a sudden comes back with an assist. You well, know I mean? Manja Sandu said he didn't show any Digne T, <laughs> which is a great. <laughs> just wanted to read that because it was a great pun. The can you just read what Chanchadami Yonadia said? Chanchadami said, said uh, Paolo Minnesota, we want jizz. Is that what? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I just want to have you saying that on file. <laughs> right. We, who doesn't want it? We, I'm speaking for Alexis as well. Okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You did say we. You did say we. So, the, um, so that, that's an interesting thing because I, so, from, from the video I saw, uh, you know, and, and watching the game, the... Digne didn't, I mean, he, he didn't do the, you know, let me not celebrate. The, the, the dude right. was just, he was an Everton player a couple days ago. And then he's back playing Goodison Park and celebrating, celebrating a goal. Uh, he uh, was an assist, but he was celebrating. And uh, but can you blame him also? Like he was treated pretty badly. You know what I mean? So I don't see, but this is the problem is that I, I, I'm not, again, I'm not condoning anybody throwing anything at him. And I'm not even really upset if he was celebrating to to be honest but the the i don't so th there wasn't really any transparency about what happened between him and rafa benitez it, it, look we saw the his instagram post and he, he was pretty vague and just saying like you know one person could ruin uh your time at a club and obviously he was talking about rafa but he didn't say what happened rafa benitez was saying that the player didn't want to be there and didn't want to play which that didn't seem like, based on his Instagram post, didn't seem like that was the case. He seemed like he was happy to be an Everton player. And and I'm not even advocating for him like he was the best. He was he was arguably the best Everton player, you know, when, when he was there. But he wasn't a great player overall. He did. He was like kind of a defensive liability, <laughs> but he was a great passer uh, and, and good on the ball. So you're saying something very, very intelligent. I want to read something very intelligent. Mm -hmm. um, first, I want to read two things. First, David from Tampa said, imagine if they were playing in Mexico, someone might have thrown their ramen noodles. At the <laughs> <game>. <laughs> uh, and almost there, 819 said, you hop in the boop boop pit, you're going to get boop. <laughs> <laughs> and as true words ever been spoken on this show. So absolute facts, uh, you know, thank you. Uh, 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 was it almost there for <laughs> dropping some wisdom? Okay. So you got to let these. <laughs> just you said, Dine got boop. <laughs> <laughs> so the, the, I, I, Yo, think, I think I, I, I want all of you in the chat to please come over to YouTube. You got it. You got it. So I, I don't, you guys, you guys make the show so great. I don't know why the, you know, I don't think Everton fans have much of a reason to be mad at Dine. That's all I'm saying. He celebrated the goal, which I, yeah, I, look, not, not a good move. Obviously still, you shouldn't throw anything at him, but he, he left with nobody saying, we hate this guy. I'm glad he's gone. Literally, no right. uh, Everton fans were like, yeah, maybe he's not the best, but he's, he was one of our better players. Nobody had anything negative to say about this dude. And then he plays on the play for the other team, maybe celebrated a little too much and got something thrown at him. Not, it's, it's not cool, but it, it's a – even now – Nobody's at Everton. No Everton friends. I haven't heard anybody still say anything negative about him um, or defend him 
either. So it's like a, it's just like a strange situation. I think it was Everton mishandling. I, I think it would have been better to be a little bit more transparent about what happened. It's just I get it's business, and maybe he didn't want they didn't want to mess up the transfer or something. But it's it is so strange that you know a manager can come in and just kind of ruin a relationship with a player, and then you don't even keep the manager. Like we we spoke about this last week, but it, it's it's just not a good look. And 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 you know, and then it you know sort of that whole saga ending with a loss and somebody throwing something at the player, just terrible, terrible. Um, okay. Um, the so as far as that, and then as far as manager, so Duncan Ferguson, I I think he he did a good job in inspiring the players. The Everton did play pretty well against. Not good Aston. enough. Not good enough, but bro, the 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 level has not wasn't you know has not been good the last couple of weeks, and the level was pretty good. I would say against Aston Villa, As, they were pretty even teams. It was a set piece. Whatever it just it happens, um, but they offensively they, they played in a four a four four two and with Richarlison and Dominic Calvert Lewin up top and it, it just but what have I said for for literally weeks on this on this show I keep talking about the midfield right I say like we 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 have no control of the midfield it's like it's an absolute nightmare and they did it again. Played, they played four four two. That two midfield. You've been you've been complaining about this midfield since Andre Grome, Gomez got his leg broken. <laughs> <Gomez>, <laughs> you really have Gomez <laughs> and Ducure in the middle. Can the you th- when you hear those two names, you do you think these guys are going to lock down the middle? They they, they got <laughs> everything. <laughs> I thought was I ain't been like yo, they got this. <laughs> Gomez can't. He's too. He's frankly too slow to defend, but he is good on the ball. Ducure is is not really. You know, not a super reliable uh, defender, uh, but he's he's good on the ball and good at going forward. He's more of an eight instead of a six, and it, it was <laughs> almost there. Eight one nine said, "Boops, they did it again." <laughs> <laughs> Allen was injured, um, so he didn't start the game, uh, but he did come in in the second half and did what he could. He played. He had a couple good runs. But it just wasn't enough. Uh, just look, Everton so, are not good enough. Uh, we all, we all know this. They're just not a good enough team. And so it, it's it, where where are you guys? You're in what? 15th? 16th? 16th. Yeah. Okay. Look. Who's your next match? Your next match is a wildly important one. Is it Brentford? Newcastle. You're home to well, okay, FA Cup is Brentford, but Newcastle's your next one. Newcastle playing really well. They've brought in some new players. This isn't going to be easy. They're in 18th. If you lose to them, they don't hop over you, but you're now in a relegation battle. I think you need one more loss. Maybe. You know what? You're probably in a relegation battle now. You're in 19 <laughs> points. Yeah, yeah. But you haven't won in, what, 12? 12 straight matches? Oh, bro. I don't even know. I don't even no, know. Well, you, and you've won one out of 12. Arsenal. <laughs> you know, right, right. That was, the last, that was the last Premier League win. Uh, Man Stan said, boops, there it is. Uh, <laughs> you've, you've only won once out of the last 12. Um, it's not looking great. You're in a relegation battle. Does Everton stay up? And it looks like it looks like uh, Dunk is going to be your uh, caretaker through the end of the season. It doesn't look like they're going to bring somebody in unless all these rumors of that Vitor Pereira guy. So uh, let me let me fill official. you in, bro, because every everybody's talking. I'm I'm plugged into these Liverpool streets, bro. Oh, we back in them sources? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Was, does 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 an Everton front office official also go to that whole So booth? first you be <laughs> first off, yo, Farhad Mashiri, the owner of Everton, sent me an email. I know he sent everybody an email, but he it went to my inbox. Yo, you ain't got to announce all that other stuff. He, stay, you he sent me an email, email saying that, yo, he believes in this club. He he want, he believes in the future of it, and, and they're going to try to find a manager. And I'm like, yo, thank you, my man Farhad. I appreciate I... you reaching out to me directly, okay? <laughs> Should I let everyone else know? <laughs> what are you telling me? I, I, I got the, the group chat on WhatsApp. I can, I'll let them know if you need me to let them know. But it, a lot of people were... They appreciate it. Like, I don't even say they appreciate it, but it was like I, the acknowledgement was cool. Um, and and it look when the owners of a club is emailing you, 
things are not in a good place right now. Okay, when, yeah, no, <laughs> you're, it's not. You don't want to. Yeah. If Stan Kroenke have to turn for the worst before they pull up the old <laughs> Gmail, you know. <laughs> if Stan Kroenke is emailing you, Alexis, it's not gonna be for good news. Okay, <laughs> we've gone, we've gone tits up. If, if Stan Kroenke is emailing, so me. the the, uh, the John Chada Millonario said, if you just came in, Alexis would look like he's the worst therapist ever for Christian. You've lost twelve. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the the um so the the next managerial appointment is super important to how the fan base is going to react. Do you want you want a manager now or do you want to wait till the summer? I would I would wait for the summer. Based as just based on what. So you think Duncan Ferguson could keep this team up? Yes, I do. Based on how I how? saw them play. So why you think? This? Based on how I saw them play against Aston Villa, the heart was there. They were. I don't know if you. I don't know if you watched this game, but oh, I did. Everton. And I felt terrible for you. Remember, don't forget, we've now <laughs> told the fans why we've been watching Everton games. Right. We were sitting here waiting to release this goddamn documentary. <laughs> right. Top and of my I'm voice. Like, I'm like, <laughs> yeah. Top of my voice just said, "We want this fucking documentary already." Yeah, we also <laughs> want it <laughs> yeah, yeah. as well. So yeah, I'm with you on that. Top of my voice. So the uh, so we we yeah we mentioned this. So we filmed the documentary. It's done. It's ready to go. It's incredible. <laughs> we're Lason. so proud of it. What's gonna be? Nick Lay said, what's going to be more delayed, the new Top Gun or this documentary? <laughs> <laughs> but we're just waiting for Everton to have a decent spell, have a victory, just some good news, uh, and then we will release it. Just something it. positive. <laughs> it just has to be something positive. Honestly, if they if they announce a new manager and the fans are behind it and there's excitement in the fan base, yeah. this documentary gets <laughs> we released. Have to, it's reason I enough. I don't care. It's reason enough. So... Um, so the the <laughs> Barry going to say Dr. Dre's next album will be out over this documentary. <laughs> Almost there said the, a tough documentary. I love that one. <laughs> oh yeah, more like a boop documentary at this point. <laughs> so um the the so based on how Everton played against Villa, I do think Duncan Ferguson should be the manager till at least till the end of the season. The heart was there. The so if you saw this game, you saw that. Uh, Aston Villa had maybe two or three players that their jerseys were ripped. Did you see this? They were literally yeah. tore because they were defending so so much that they didn't want to let their players go. They were marking people. And I think it was two or three players that had their, their shirts ripped off. There was one guy, I forgot his name, but he had to he had a replacement kit. Uh, that had no name with on no it name and no number. number. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that was because of the tenacious defense from uh, Everton Football Club. So, again, the heart was there. The, 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 the pace was there. They, they were playing so much faster with a lot of heart. Yerry Mina was, was basically a forward. They were really trying to get this goal. Uh, it didn't work out, but I did like the, the way they played. The last few minutes were a little frustrating. I also, I just despise watching the long kick on a on a goal kick i just can't i prefer playing out the back yeah everton have no interest remember in the midfielder <laughs> thing who are they gonna pass it to that's gonna hold on to <laughs> yeah, yeah. but this this you know huffing it forward was just so difficult to watch the last few minutes were were kind of funny though because you could see the frustration in jordan pickford when he was like get out of here and give it to me. Stop <laughs> passing it back and forth. Give it to me. I'm going to send it as far yeah. as possible. And one of you do something, you know? Yeah. It's, um, it's very good. said, you know what would make the fan base happy? Get some jizz in that. Everything <laughs> kid. Huh? <laughs> yeah. What? Who was it? Um, uh, that, that got in trouble for saying jizz on a broadcast. Um, uh, Oh, I have no idea. Why am I forgetting? Not us. No, no. Well, I'm forgetting his name. The Philadelphia union. Um, Broadcaster, he used to used to be the announcer, the uh, Irish guy. We we interviewed him. Oh, Tommy Smith. Tommy Smith. Remember, he got in trouble for it was a, a World Cup broad broadcast or maybe the Euros, and he, and he was talking about Andrea Pirlo. And in Ireland, um, jizz just means uh, like you you have like a lot gumption. of lot of energy, a lot of excitement. And, yeah. and and he and it was like Pirlo scored a goal or did something, and he says, "Oh, Andrea Andrea Pirlo was showing a lot of jizz out there today." And he got in <laughs> huge trouble because American audiences was like, uh, excuse me, what, what's going on over here? Uh, I haven't watched soccer in a minute, but this <laughs> seems like the game is different now. You know? <laughs> so, um, yeah, what was I saying? Um, we were talking about jizz. Um, almost there, 819 said, uh, only one man for Everton, Shamak. <laughs> who, did we talk about it? We talked about this. Uh, <laughs> Which we call it? Chanchalami United. He said, Vim, Vigor, 
And jizz? <laughs> <laughs> um, Tommy Smith jizzed on TV. That's what you heard, Barry Aguna. That's what Christian You know what? Said. We're not going to correct you. Let everyone you. know this is what Christian is talking about, please. Um, what you want to call it? Uh, did we put this? We talked about this, right? Uh, what's his name? Shama got his hair back. We did talk about this. Yes, this is okay. I I was shocked. I'm like, why are all these photos of older looking <laughs> Shamak from his early? We talk, days? I'm, I'm Rob Holding as well. We talked about his uh, his yeah, triumphant dude. return of his hair. Uh, okay, so <laughs> can we also talk about how um how uh, yeah, what, I didn't I didn't know this. Up. Thank you so much, David from Tampa. Perfect time to resubscribe. I can't imagine a better day to do so. <laughs> yes, David from Tampa. Um, which one call it? Chelsea, uh, or or uh, Tottenham haven't won at Chelsea in something like since like I think thirty straight match, something crazy like that. Mm. Like Tottenham just never wins at uh, oh, at and then you could just end the sentence right there. You didn't. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Listen, it would be my dream. It would be my dream to just say that. Imagine, I, 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 I wish a day where Tottenham had that massive stadium and they were in the championship or like League One. Mm. Oh my God. It was just me. I don't care if we're also there. It would just make me so happy. <laughs> so, uh, oh, speaking of Tottenham, the, the uh, Weston McKinney. Bing hey, Bing Bong. Thank you so Bing much, Bong. Ford Martin. Um, I was about to hit the air horn, but pull back when Alexis goes off on Tottenham. Thanks, Nick. Like, <laughs> wait, Nick, you were like two teams I hate. You're like Rebel and Tottenham? <laughs> Damn. So, uh, but Tottenham, they, I, I believe they were uh, 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 trying to get Weston McKinney. Uh, from Juve, and I don't know if they made like an offer, but at least they, I've heard that they inquired about him, and the the answer is is uh is no. Uh, apparently, Weston Mc, <laughs> Weston McKenney is untouchable, which is so surreal to hear about an American midfielder that, and, and playing at one of the biggest clubs in the world. But Weston being untouchable, what do you even uh, think about that? Even just at, at, at Juve, but also as an American player, what did you think when you heard that? It shows the importance. We're we're in an era right now, and I'm going to pull this back from being overly American. I'm just going to talk about we are in an era where we don't have a lot of great strikers, right? Lukaku is considered one of the top strikers, and he's not having a great season, um, and he has some you know some serious faults about his game. But we're also in an era where this sort of hybrid defensive central midfielder is extremely hard to find as proof of Arsenal not being able to find one right now and giving away an Ainsley Maitland house because it's just not good enough in the eyes of Arteta. But you've got a guy like Weston McKenney who won scores goals in big matches, clearly a fun player to be around, clearly important. And we can't stress this enough as much as everyone's like, it's football, mate. Don't say soccer. Dude, it's a huge, it's a big deal to have an American player that's playing well. That's right, top of my voice. It's a big deal because you get the American market. Everybody's, Everybody's just cashing. Wasting their gully. <laughs> like, let's go. Um, so the look uh, for By the way, our yo, our other things are gonna start in two minutes. Yeah, yeah. We'll seven twenty eight. We'll be on, on YouTube live in a moment and we'll we'll wrap this up and kind of explain everything uh going on uh, in a little bit. Uh, but I, I wanted to uh, point this out as well. Tottenham uh, for Bito Romano said uh, Tottenham have submitted an official bid for, for Luis Diaz, the Colombian, uh, who who yeah. has been just lighting it up in, in some of these World Cup qualifiers. Uh, th th there was a couple. There was a, he scored the bicycle kick in one of the World Cup qualifiers right. um, um, a, a couple months ago. So the, I think he's thirty five million, if I'm not mistaken. The, the, but they want more. They want something like fifty. The Duke of Ball. I know Everton. I, I think was inquiring about him as well. Um, so, hey, shouts uh, to Nick Lage. So. The uh, so yeah, um, but 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 Weston McKenney, even so, let's say Weston McKenney did go to Tottenham. I I think this is a, that would be a good move for him. I mean, for, let's, no, let's I've remove, had let's, to deal with, let's remove the the no, it, bias. it's bad because it's Tottenham. Forget even if, if, if the fact that I'm wearing an Arsenal shirt has nothing to do with <laughs> it, it's still Tottenham. You don't want you don't want an American playing there. Look what happened to Clint Dempsey when he went there. What happened to Clem Dempsey when he went there? He barely got time, and he scored big goals, and the fans did, still didn't like him. So, no, we don't want you. Really? Right? Okay. We don't want you, Tottenham. I, 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 don't, I mean, him, Weston McKinney in the Premier League, I, I, I just, it, in general, I think would be such a good, such a good fit. I, I mean, even at, at this, we've, we've spoken about Weston before. Weston, he's not like the, 
fastest dude in the world. Like, like he's 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 a midfielder that has the 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 awareness, like spatial awareness and where to position himself, like a striker. You know what I mean? Like he 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 kind of has that. Like, um, who's a uh, who's the uh, who's the striker that that is not fast? Are we gonna be late for this thing? We are. I'm just. It's not. It's fine. Let's finish the show. We have okay. I'm like <laughs> my guy's just sitting here talking. I'm like, what are you doing? We have to finish the show. Um, the uh, strikers that are not like you know that that are super mobile, but they always just like know where to be. That that's McKenny's sort of that kind of a midfielder. He just kind of knows exactly where to position himself. The fact that he has has several goals for for Juve as a midfielder, and he's scoring like headers. He's 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 scoring like like big man goals. Um, he's a great player. He's he's proven himself to be a important player. In Europe, and that's all we've wanted from our midfield, and it's coming at the right time. He's nowhere near his peak. Oh. He's nowhere near the peak of himself as yeah. a player, and he's, it's coming at the right time, especially with the World Cup coming up, which we need to qualify for real bad. Right. <laughs> uh, oh, top of my voice pointed out that Clint Dempsey played in the same position as Gareth Bale, so it was going to be a tough, uh, tough, you know, uh, way to get in uh, in some of these matches. But what, like, let us know. I mean, I honestly think Weston McKinney at Tottenham would be a good spot for him. I think he would. Yeah, I think it would be very good. I think Weston McKinney at Arsenal would be perfect, but Juventus is dead to us now. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't. Um, I don't know about Arsenal. Him playing there. Tyler Adams. Why? Seems like a better fit. Probably because Tyler Adams is much uh, better fit. Arsenal. What I hear, huge Arsenal supporters. Right. So. Right. I. I. I just think um, the 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 pace that Arsenal play at is not is more fitting for Tyler Adams than it is for West, uh, Weston McKinney. But that's just me. Okay. Um, all right, everybody. So, uh, thank you again, uh, for tuning in, uh, everybody here on Twitch. Uh, and if you're listening to this podcast, so again, the final, this is our final Prem show on Twitch. We will now be doing these on, uh, on YouTube live, youtube.com slash soccer cooligans. Join us there going forward. Thank you to, again, we said this last week, but thank you to everybody here that, that has helped us, uh, develop this really, really awesome community. <laughs> That's right. Air horns all day. Thank you, Thank you. for a everybody hit that air horn. Let's go. Thank you. Thank you, Twitch. Thank you, everyone at Twitch. Thank you, all the fans at Twitch. Thank you so much, Golo Blanco. We honestly, we'd still just be trying to figure this out. It would be Christian holding up a phone while I FaceTimed <laughs> in if it wasn't for Golo Blanco. Golo Blanco gave us a, a lot of help, a lot of support. Let's so, go. Um, yes, YouTube.com slash soccer cooligans. That's where Prem Show will continue. Uh, we're going to be doing a we're lot. We're going to go there right now. Yes, we're going to be. If, if you're listening to this, you can go back and watch it. But if you're on Twitch with us, we're going there right now. Correct. Uh, y'all the absolute best. Thank you so much uh, for for uh, tuning in and joining us. Again, the show's not going anywhere. We're just going to uh, a different uh, platform. If you're saying RIP Twitch. <laughs> now, bro, we'll, still, we'll be here from time to time, maybe for some like watch alongs and things like that. But YouTube Live, uh, subscribe to the Cooligans YouTube channel. We're going to be doing a lot more stuff there. And, and whenever... Uh, the documentary comes out. That's where it will be. So that's where you can go check it out. Yes. So, all right. Uh, so go right now, youtube.com slash soccer cooligans. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. Hit that little bell too. We got to be one of these people now. Hit the little bell so you know <laughs> when we come on because Twitch actually allows us to send you a message. YouTube don't do that unless you hit that little bell. So hit that little bell. Okay. Uh, Dave from Tampa said, I didn't get the air horn. I Maybe there's like a limit attached to it. We're not yeah, sure. Yeah, you can't but, use them. Uh, you have to wait a couple minutes before you can use it again. Um so yeah, you know how it is. Okay. Christian loves the school teacher, you guys. No, no, no. I mean, Only wait, it would time. be all air horns and all bing bongs all day if we <laughs> if I, I mean, <laughs> can you think of a better show? Uh, but uh run, don't walk to latinotemperament.com <laughs> if you want to find our YouTube. Uh shouts to everybody who helped us here. Absolutely amazing. Uh, we love you guys. Everybody go to our YouTube channel. All right, we'll see you in a bit. All right. Uh, so let's let, oh let's end the the show properly for the podcast. <laughs> yeah. My name is Christian Polanco. I'm Alexis Guerrero. And for the last time on Twitch, what are we? The Cooligans!